Hi, I'm Christina. I'm Maya from, from Book, Book for Dreams, Dreams and welcome to your video. So today we're going to talk about what we've read in the month of October. Okay, so how many books did you read in October? Uh, so I read eight books. Uh, two were fantasies, two were sci-fi, one was a literary, literary fiction god. One was a wild mystery and two romances. All right, I read nine things. Um, I read one science, uh, sorry, two science fiction books, uh, four paranormal romance books, uh, one middle grade, and two fantasy books. Ready to go? Yeah. Yep. You want to start? All right, so I'll start with the science fiction books that I read. So okay. I read this Desolation Cold Peace by Ar Arcady. Arcady. Arcadi? Arcadi Martin, sorry, I'm just totally blanking on the how to pronounce the author's name. Anyway, this is the uh, sequel to a memory called Empire. Empire. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> everything. All right, because you know, I kept thinking throughout the month, is it memory called peace or memory called empire? Is it desolation called peace? <laughs> desolation called empire. So this is the sequel to memory called Empire. Empire. I almost said peace again. Anyway, so we follow. Uh, a Mahit who has uh, who is uh, a part of a s sort of s a space station dwelling people, and she is sent to this uh, entire uh, huge uh, empire called Texicalan, where to be the ambassador of her people. Now the problem is that they have a technology that lets you um, put the memories of the predecessors of your uh, profession into your head, so that you have all their knowledge, experience, and everything. But her predecessor didn't come to back to the station for the last 15 years. So she has only his memories of like 15 years ago. And, and he died. And, and he died, yes. He, That's he, why she's the she's ambassador. She's going there again, right. Uh, <laughs> and when she comes to the planet, she finds out that he has been murdered. And since she's like working on half capacity because she doesn't have everything that she needs, she is uh, joined by sort of her like bureaucratical um, helpers to figure out what happened to the previous... Uh, pre uh, who, to her predecessor and basically stop a plot against the emperor and then stuff continues on in the second book but the second book also has this element of um, a first contact story because throughout the first book there is this mysterious uh, enemy that mm -hmm. is uh, sort of lurking at the um, uh, edge. edge of the empire and, and you know hurting everybody so uh, in the second book they sort of deal with that problem uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure what I gave it on Goodreads, um, <laughs> but I, I'm finding myself really enjoying First Contact stories. I mean, oh, I mean really being cool. that I read um, Pro Project Hail Mary like pre a couple of months ago, um, you know, it, it was really fun. It was really interesting. There was just a lot of, uh, at some point, um, uh, well, this is kind of spoilery, but there is a romantic element to this. And at some point, from our, the first book? From the first book, yes. Oh, okay. But the problem was that after the romance um, happened, one of the characters kept constantly thinking about the sex they were having in the middle of the serious situations that they were in. Ooh. And I ha that's my pet peeve when reading things. Yeah. It's like you are in the middle of negotiate negotiating for your life and death, and you're thinking about all oh, her arms, all oh, her this, all oh, her yeah. that. This. Okay. And I'm like, dude, focus, focus. But yeah, yeah that, that was that was uh, that was the one book that I read, and the second uh, science fiction book that I read is this. We had a conversation about this whether Molly Southbourne by Tate uh, Thompson was science fiction or horror. Yeah. Uh, I read the sequel, The Survival of uh, Molly Southbourne, and um, uh, it was it was interesting, but I was like more uh, um, distracted by the fact that I now knew that this was happening in London oh. or in England. <laughs> Because he kept mentioning the geographical places and stuff. And I was like, in the first book, I thought this is like, oh, this is like a village somewhere. And I didn't think like America or England, whatever. I was like, oh, they're on a farm because they're on a farm most of the time and, and a college, okay. right? Yeah. So in this one, like, oh, she comes to live in London and then her her village was in London. Sure, I know I know those places in England, right? <laughs> so, uh, but the second book of this um, horror story the horror science fiction story whatever yeah. um basically deals with the psychological uh um repercussions, repercussions of uh you know uh the first book of the first basically. book basically i can't tell you because it's a huge spoiler for the first like, book the and entire if you say anything about the book basically the second one it's like a huge spoiler. Yeah. but yeah uh it, it was it was an interesting read so yeah, yeah. Oh, this is also, the, oh, sorry, that one was part, I, I participated in three readathons and we will leave the link to all my um, 
not readers, not three of them, but whatever. How many ever readathons I participated in October? <laughs> I don't remember anymore. I uh, will leave the link to the vlogs that I did uh, down below and maybe somewhere sometimes here so you can uh, check out my deeper thoughts on this. Yep. Okay, so Maya basically uh, explained one of my books, sci fi books that I read because I read a memory called Empire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I won't repeat what happens in there because she explained it very well. Uh, I know I gave it three stars. I wasn't as impressed by it uh, like everyone else. I just felt it was a bit heavy in the style sense. It just uh, it didn't yeah, it, it didn't it didn't flow from for me as well uh, as some it other. It requires some adaptation to the whole. Yeah, um, I mean, I I was culture um, of this book. Yeah, uh, it was easier when I followed like. Uh, I found out that's called immersion reading when you listen to audio and like read, read the book. book at the same okay. time. So that helped. That helped. That helped me get through a lot of the book. But when I either when I was either following just an audio or um, in the book, uh, like on Kindle, I just just it was it was so difficult sometimes to just follow what was happening. But the style is dense. Like the the writing it was very dense for me. And uh, I just kind of, um, it was, I, I know it, it's like a thing, it, it, it's obvious that I don't read a lot of sci-fi because it just, everything felt very strange to me, like the names and, oh, it's like, for me too. and <laughs> everything, but I just couldn't, like, I, I had to keep reminding myself who this was and why was this, like, stuff, like, the initial mystery, it started off very strong, I was, like, really like invested oh my god what's gonna happen here mm -hmm. and then like it lagged at one point where oh, i was like i was just like poetry competition mm -hmm. right <laughs> oh i actually didn't mind it that much I, I kind of understood the point like why it was important to understand within the culture that she is mm -hmm. but being a person who really doesn't like poetry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh like which is not saying anything against poetry. I'm just like I'm incapable of comprehending it. That's yeah, just like my too. problem, uh, and like uh, I th I think that that also kind of put me out of the story because like there's also a lot of uh, talk about linguistics and I uh, like yeah. like I'm I like I majored in linguistics like in English language like it's something I should be interested in like but I wasn't and that was just like hmm so like it was interesting but at the same time very dense and it just kind of that's why like an average three mm -hmm. but she claims that the second one is a bit better so i, I mean i, I read, I read to... the first one i sort of saw it as a uh, like a sci-fi uh, political thriller yeah and i found it very fascinating i i, I would admit i listened to it on audio at like two point speed mm -hmm. uh but yeah i thought it, you know i just kind of like zoned out on the poetry part <laughs> but you know yeah okay fine. yeah you should read the second one though it's really cool yeah and the second sci-fi book i read is the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins which is like book zero in the hunger games trilogy so like what i don't know is this now a series it's a prequel, no, this is a prequel. it's, it's, it's a prequel uh, and i heard a lot of bad things about it to be honest but i had it on audio and santino fontana reads the audio I do like him. And he's, like, a, he's a Broadway dude. So. Yeah, and like I was literally in the midst of rewatching Crazy Eyes Girl Girlfriend, and his character is basically my favorite character in that <laughs> show. And like, I think I got through the book basically because he was reading it. Because I was like, oh my god, listen to his voice, it's indeed. <laughs> So, yeah, just fangirling over here right now. So what's um, the book about? Basically, this is the story of uh, President Snow, uh, actually uh, from the time when he is at some kind of, you know, university, okay. and he is doing his final project thing, where all of them become mentors okay. in the Hunger Games to, like, you know, like, the children that come to... Wait, so is this, like, the first Hunger Games or? This is not the first Hunger Games, this is the first time that the kids that participate in the Hunger Games have mentors. Oh, okay. So and previously they had no mentors? No. Jesus, no. okay. This is the first time they have mentors and they're like this university graduates and they have to show that they're like good and stuff. And basically we follow uh, Snow uh, and his family and like what happens to him. There's, there's like a lot, there's like his family, 
so they're in the capital they're supposed to be rich but they're not not rich so they're like on the poor side but st still live in a good neighborhood mm -hmm. because like they inherited stuff um and he has like he lives with his grandma and his cousin and like i don't know i wrote here like is it a redemption story is it supposed to be like because I thought he was kind of sunky in the book though i mean what people told us yeah saying. like I, I was i like I, I I guess I hoped it would be like a de redemption story, like you would get like something really awful happened to him, and that's why he's you know like so mean and like he is what he is in the other three books. But basically, my conclusion after reading it was okay. So he was basically like a sadist and a tyrant the entire the, time. The entire time, like it's not as explicit here, like mm -hmm. but you through some stuff that he does throughout the book, you can see. Like his, uh, although like he is still, um, you know, like poor and like it has to do with the capital. He is still very loyal to the capital and, you know, ready to betray other people in the name of the capital and stuff like that. So like you can see that in essence, that is his true nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, but like it wasn't like I didn't find it to be like deplorably bad. Like it was just, you know, it was a story. You know, people have different um, expectations, expectations maybe. The book, so. Yeah, so yeah, that's basically it. All right. Uh, so I read One Middle Grade and I read uh, The Forgotten Girl by India Hill Brown. Uh, this was for the Black SFF Athon. And this was the group book. We In this book, we follow Iris. And Iris has been feeling very forgotten by her parents and by her school. And while playing one day outside in the snow, she finds a grave. Uh, which is part of a forgotten graveyard in her town mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. somehow i don't want to say activates the ghost but activates the ghost and the, the, the ghost <laughs> of, the, of the dead girl whose grave she found is sort of haunting her and iris throughout the book is working on this project on how to uh, on the forgotten um grave graveyards in her town there is a sort of a, there is a racial element to this there is like ghost huntings there's like but my like it was a it was an okay book i, okay. I enjoyed it but my biggest problem was i was more focused on her earthly problems and the fact that she <laughs> doesn't speak to her parents like this oh. is how i'm feeling and uh like this is the reason that she feels forgotten at home because she has a younger sister oh. who keeps copying everything that she does and so she doesn't oh. feel unique anymore and, and she feels oh. and her parents are like well you know she just wants to be like you and and the, every you know the stuff that happens in the book like it's fine but at the end i was like but the, the main problem is still there like you're still going to feel this way the only reason your parents are currently paying attention to you because there was this a danger element at the mm. third act of the book mm. but after that it's like over and done with it's like well, this is gonna you know this not is gonna change yeah. and that was like that was my my, my biggest like okay. pet peeve with this book but it was you know it's an interesting read Apparently, any middle grade that I read has to be a horror middle grade, and I'm creeped <laughs> out by kids now, and it's really strange because I am a teacher. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, <laughs> you know, that was my middle grade. Yeah, what did okay. you read? <laughs> so I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is a YA mystery. So we follow Pippa, who is in her, I think, senior year uh, in high school, and she's doing her final year project, and she chooses to kind of delve more into the murder that has happened five years ago in her town. Uh, where uh, high, high school student Andy uh, was killed by her then boyfriend Cell. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Pippa knew Cell mm -hmm. like while she was growing up, and she doesn't actually believe Cell murdered mm -hmm. uh, Andy. And she goes basically on a hunt to, not on a hunt. She just you know interviews people and like she's trying to you know write an essay about it. That's basically it. Okay. Uh, it was really fun. I enjoyed it so much. Uh, it had like all. I mean, it had a lot of the tropes that YA, YA books have, but it didn't bother me at all. It had very much the feeling of like Veronica Mars, Goldie Vance type of thing, where you have like a young detective and she solves murders and like mysteries and stuff like that. And I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, I listened to it on audio. There was a full cast. Uh, since I think in the physical format you actually have like some uh, newspaper clippings and trans transcripts uh, of you conversations. know conversations and stuff. What they did in the audiobook we, was that you actually heard like her talking. It felt like she was talking over the phone or that she was actually you know like. Um, uh, taping something like on her phone mm -hmm. and that was really interesting you know like you had that additional element of Sound like effect. yeah 
So I absolutely joined it. There are three books in the series. I plan on definitely at least reading the second one and see what happens next because like it, it left not on a cliffhanger, but it was just like, okay, now I want to know what happened with this part. So yeah. Wait, does she find out what actually happened in the first one or not? To the murders and stuff? Well, kind of. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. All right. So yeah. So that was part one of our wrap up. Um, if you read any, any of the books that we have, please do leave us a comment down below and share your thoughts if you agree with us or disagree with us. Yes, please like, share, subscribe, press the bell button if you want to get notifications whenever we post new videos. There are some important links down in the description box, check them out. And thank you so much for watching. Check out the second part of this wrap Soon. up. Soon. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye.